what's going on guys one last little video from me following training grounds three um a little retrospective video i did this after the completion of gb hidden cup 2 and it was a really good chance for me to document my ideas following the tournament um and i'd like to do the same here just for about 10 or 15 minutes or so just to give a summary of what how i feel the event went um which is partly for my benefit but also can be interesting for you to get an insight into my mind um as a tournament organizer if anyone is considering doing the same um just to give some uh some thoughts around that i've got pixel here with me making a cameo she is in a kind of orange slice uh cone to stop her licking herself too much so <laughs> apologies for that um this is going to be unscripted but obviously i do have some talking points side there which i will be going over so first one of those is general feeling um and i feel really good with how the tournament went out um i think it was good event it was fun to play it sounds like it was really fun to watch i know that for sure it was competitive um things went very smoothly on the whole there was a couple of little bits and bobs i would like to change which obviously um i will cover later but all in all a really good feeling with how the thing went um and for those who don't know i'm very tend to be very self-critical a lot of the time but um i am accepting the warm feedback from people and um yeah it makes me really happy to say that i think this event went, went event went very well so um yeah thanks everyone for that and um it was a really good one to uh, uh to watch as a as a neutral um good games to cast and yeah it's uh, some good good vibes after the tournament so really happy to, to have that okay so the next point more specifically is on the map pool um and this one is an interesting one so i think the in previous editions of training grounds i have purposefully avoided using water maps with the idea that lower rated players like midi, midi low players basically don't like water so having that in the tournament would mean they just get perma banned and people don't like them so they're not going to practice them um so i tried to avoid it basically we, we had training grounds 2 golden swamp doesn't really count as a water map um kawasan as well not really much water going on there okay it's a bit of a bit of fighting but it, it's hybrid at best so in training grounds 3 we had Brazil as a big one which obviously is the super water map atoll as well the custom map from Vinny for this edition Owino hybrid um, and Grostrox as well had some sort of hybrid potential there as well so I think this was really good I think the players really bought into the uh hybrid and water nature of the tournament i assume there were lots of people going into the event who didn't have water maps down as one of their some of their favorite maps in age of empires 2 but i do genuinely feel that there were some con converts to a water enjoyment um throughout the event brazil for instance had more play time in the group stage than arena for example so that's an interesting stat and Socotra as well um so yeah uh, i think that was a that was a good one and the kind of theme of the tournament is all about pushing the comfort zone a little bit of intermediate rated players because 
that's how to improve, right? You have to go beyond your boundaries to set new boundaries. And I think that's the uh, that's the thing with, with those water maps. It, it is an aspect of Age of Empires 2, which can be avoided if you are willing to avoid it. But if you're willing to, to pursue it, it is a whole aspect of the game that you otherwise would miss out on. So, um, yeah, I think it went well, as basically, to summarize, I think the experiment of giving quite a watery map pool did work out well. A Wino, of course, was brilliant, and I hope to see that in future events. Um, a hybrid map, but I think it's a really good map, and it was cool to see this group of players get the chance to experience that, a map like that, completely fresh without any chance for... Um, watching a pro game to practice or whatever like that. There was nothing like that, so you had to figure everything out yourself. The meta was defined in Training Ground 3 by the games that happened, so that was really cool to see as well. Um, and just to pick up on one other piece of feedback was about the Nomad start map. I did include Nomad in Training Grounds 2. I didn't know what Nomad map I would do in Training Grounds 3. Nomad is a bit derivative itself, so probably rather do something else and then it's a bit like well you know map pool's not huge right nine maps in the map pool missing a nomad start is not the end of the world and we already have this focus on water so not against nomad in principle but in this exact circumstance i didn't go with it and i don't think the tournament suffered too much because of that but um yeah, with a wider map pool, I would look to include some other styles as well, such as Nomad. All right, so the next one is the players. I hope everyone will agree that this was the most competitive training grounds event thus far. For those of you who weren't in training grounds one or two, I suppose you, you can't comment on that, but I definitely feel like it was. We didn't really have any smurfs. Well, okay. <laughs> if we had some, we kind of had some smurfs, right? But equal level of smurfiness. So no, no crazy smurfs. Um, everybody won a game, right? I think everyone won a game. Uh, I'd have to double check that, but. Yeah, I think that's correct. And the lower bracket, of course, had some massive names in there like Tomerd, El Mero Mero, and Para, and Dom Husk winning that is huge. I think practice was reward rewarded with with the way that the finishers um, placed, and it wasn't a case of people rocking up and just, you know. <laughs> throwing down their elo as a trump card and saying well i don't care that you've practiced i'm just going to beat you so i think that's what you want that's what i want as a tournament organizer is for practice on the maps to be rewarded and i think that's what we saw and some innovation from husk especially with the roman strat on sacred springs that was really cool to see so yeah i i think the players should be very proud of themselves all of you um and i just like to thank you again for a great uh, performance and a great event. Okay, so on to the group stage. Um, the group stage, I think this format is good. I'm probably going to keep that for any future events of a similar type. Play all three is good because it just gives you that certainty that you're going to play three games, right? So you can really practice the maps. If you get if you get swept 3-0 by a stronger opponent, you're the fourth seed in the group going up against the first seed. You get three good games of practice against that person. And you know that going into the series. So it should be a learning opportunity. Um, whereas if the group stage is a best of three, then you, you only get those two games against someone. So can deprive you of some good practice time which would help you then in the knockouts um 
the pick band system, I think that was a piece of feedback, right? So I think that was good, to be honest, because I, oh, I, I just prefer it this way. I just prefer it this way. Um, for, for reference that what I'm saying there is I like it the fact that you can get a uh, ban before you get pick in the best of three <sighs> I, I think two picks and a snipe as well it, it's just not quite the same I, I'm gonna stick with this probably um, but happy for people to raise that and share more of the conversation there um, that's probably about it for the group stage. For the knockouts, I, let's see about the knockouts. We had best of fives and then best of seven final again. I mean, it's, it's fairly vanilla, right? It's, it's not that, um, it's not that spicy, but it does just work. And yeah, I guess one thing there was I definitely missed a good chunk of the round of 16 games from my casting and I suppose the more aggressive knocking out kind of format for instance first in the group goes to upper bracket second in the group goes to lower bracket and that's it the bottom two get knocked out I would have more time to cast series but I wanted to give everyone that opportunity to play I think my casting is not <laughs> so amazing that you really need it right I'd rather people have the play time um, <laughs> like the casting is absolutely could be missed um, it's not crucial to the flowing of the tournament so I, I think this way around is better for that reason um, Best of seven final as well, I think it's fine. Going to best of nine is a lot. Um, especially for amateur players, right? Not pros, so I think best of seven is good. It also gives you that kind of feeling of importance for best of seven, right? It's a, it's a proper long event, so I think that's a perfect middle ground. Cool. Okay, so then on to my casting. Um, which I obviously tried to be as objective as possible there. I believe my casting was good this time round. I think it's improved every training grounds from one to three. I'm a lot more confident uh, this time. Um, and definitely my style is a bit more hype rather than substance, which bothers me somewhat because I'd rather have a bit more game knowledge and kind of experience of the right things to do to offer some useful insights into what could or should be happening during the games so that when players are watching it back for the primary purpose of players watching it back and then being like oh right okay yes if I'd gone hand cannons instead of skirmishers there I'd have killed those pikemen much quicker sort of thing um so i tried to do a bit of that but obviously it's easier for me you don't need to know anything about the game to be like oh my god you know there's mangonels oh the castle's getting denied right so that that's just easier from my perspective um and that's why it's so good having someone like cappy on there because cappy's game knowledge is really good um so we can bounce off each other a bit um, basically. And another thing about the casting was just to mention that it was really, really good having Happy the Andy, Tom Snuffles, and Cappy all doing some events on their own streams to get the coverage up. That really helped out a lot. So thanks to you guys for that. Um, but yeah, uh, people have given good feedback about the casting. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to change that style, but. And yeah, like I say, objectively, I'm happy with that. I also would like to slightly increase my game knowledge potential. Um, 
in the future though so i'm not quite as uh hype focused but there you go that that's just that's just what i would say um okay price pool so this was amazing so we had two big donuts we had jelly and um frozen hot puff pizza i love orange jelly and frozen hot puff pizza who between them meant that with some help from myself i think i was the only other one as well we got the prize pool to 100 pounds which is really really good prize pool for an event capped at 1450. i was not expecting that and i think like that was my sort of target like upper end of the target and we met that so that was really good i suspect people would have played without any prize at all however i do believe that giving a prize is a nice thing to do um to encourage a sort of healthy competition and community behind the tournament it felt like the engagement was really good um from players who had already been knocked out and i think it makes the event slightly more prestigious and kind of uh worth sticking around basically because you know that there's some prize money behind there maybe it is irrelevant to people and people just like the the event but i think at least subconsciously it probably does play a part I probably wouldn't be looking to have such a large prize pool for an ELO capped tournament in the future. Like I said before, we had a good scenario where there was no real problematic smurfing or anything, but that is a risk. Um, so yeah, I would probably rather have an open tournament with a, with a prize pool, but I think it's good to have some prize, basically. I think it's good to have some prize. And um, it just it just kind of means that you, you know that I'm invested in it, right? I put my money where my mouth is. So I'm not just going to ditch it. You're going to stick around and play. Um, and it just makes it a little bit more serious when it is about fun and is a light-hearted event and the community like obviously you guys know sort of, well you kind of know me right I, at least the age of empires big walt persona right so you know that i'm quite light-hearted and don't take things too seriously um but it is good to have some kind of competitive motivation and a financial one is usually the way that, that goes um so yeah that, that was that's that the prize pool so okay very quickly now it's obviously a little bit longer than 15 minutes i allowed so wrap this up so my future events um realistically you have to wait and see i guess i haven't got much in the pipeline um i would like to do another gb tournament in the future for GP players exclusively. I would also like to do a similar tournament to Training Grounds but without the ELO cap and with brackets instead. Um, that's what I've got on the line. I also, well actually no, it's, uh, that's not true. I have got one more thing in, one more iron in the fire and that's a team game tournament. So yeah, there, there's things I have planned um, but I just need some time to work on those. And then finally, the future of this event. I really do think, I'm afraid to say, this probably was the final training grounds event. Um, and yeah, I, I think the reason for that is just that we had so many players who wanted to sign up not so many we had 
a, a, a few players sign up who wanted to sign up. I turned them away because they were a few elo above. And it just, just didn't really make sense. Especially when there's probably more who wanted to sign up and didn't message because they already saw that they couldn't sign up, right? So... It feels exclusive. It does mean I can focus my attention here on this ELO bracket, which I myself was in not long ago and felt there was a, a uh, lack of coverage or appreciation for this kind of ELO range, which is players who are solid but lacking something about their game is just missing to get them into the next tier the kind of 15 1600 basically where you you are just that sort of slightly more well-rounded comfortable player um it, on, on a variety of settings so the point of the tournament is to give people that boost to get them up the rankings or if you're in the kind of lower bracket end of things 1100 1200 or 1k even you get to you know, experience that and push yourself up a bit higher. I know, for instance, Nilis was somewhere around 1k at the outset of Training Grounds 1, and now he's 1300. So I think that the tournament experience and practicing different civilizations and different strategies has helped him to do that. Obviously, that's his own hard work in doing so, but at least it gives the vehicle for that preparation and practice. So, yeah, that's basically what it's about, giving people a chance. I guess what I'm saying is with the Training Grounds event, I can still give that chance, but also not exclude people who are 1600 and want to become 1800, right? Because that's another group of people who, who I'm now excluding by... Uh, not having them able to participate in this tournament. So it's kind of balanced, right? I won't be able to split my time between everyone perfectly. So maybe I should just stick on a, a certain range and focus on that. Um, but yeah, keen for some feedback on that one. If you wouldn't mind less coverage but having a tournament open to a wider pool, um, that that probably is where I'm leaning at this moment in time. All right, um, but yeah, that's it. I I try and think if I missed anything. I don't really think I've missed much off what I wanted to say. Obviously, yeah. Thanks again to everyone for participating and being a. Uh, a nice member of this community. I think we had a really good community feel between everyone here. Like it's 32 players, right? Could be could have been tough to manage, but had barely any scheduling difficulties. Um, people were quite prompt on that, which is really good. We didn't really have any big dramatic moments. Okay, yeah, actually, yeah. So I did forget one thing. That's what I was trying to remember. So the one thing I think the sort of worst thing that I think I did was in the case of the map scripts on Atoll in the grand final we had a bugged Atoll map and we had a bugged Oino map actually so you know mistakes do happen and Both map scripts could have been fine. But the point is that it really is not a great look to have that happen. Especially when, again, money is on the line, right? It's not good to have that happen when it could be the difference between um, £40 and £20. Obviously not a massive life-changing sum of money, but it, it does make a difference to a financial decision. So... I would not like that to happen again. The scripts were a bit dodgy. Um, it, 
it's not something I'm super super proficient in. I can slightly fiddle with the map scripts a bit to 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 adjust them, which is what I did for Atoll, but couldn't completely eradicate the problem of missing res on some seeds. So yeah, it's a tough one. I didn't notice it at the time because I was casting. It was noticed too late. Yeah, it happens. Like we went the whole tournament without any issues like that, so it sucked to have that in the final. But there you go. Like it, it just goes to show that things will be found out if you don't fix them. Um. And yeah, I, I think ultimately it was it was fine, but it probably was the difference between you know I, I could have given get Daisy an extra game in that final. But say Levy. Um overall again, good event and I, I'm really happy uh, I hosted it. And thanks to everyone who helped uh Vinny, Cappy, uh Happy Andy and Tom Snuffles. Nilis for the spreadsheet, which is really good as well. Um and thanks to all the players, and thanks to you all for watching. And I will see you soon for another tournament event. Of all the information we posted in this Discord channel, so you won't miss anything coming up. All right, thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, if you made it to the end, and um, I will see you soon.